How could Tesla be worth 500 bucks per share? Personally, guys, if you ask me, Tesla stock at the moment, realistic value, if you add in future cash flow, including with FSD, because we all know that's not included in today's stock price, is worth around 400 bucks, 400, 400 to 450 bucks per share, in my humble opinion. But reality is, as right now, the stock is around 230 bucks, 220 bucks, whatever the stock price is now, because it doesn't include the future cash flow of full self driving. Unfortunately, right now, Tesla stock is being traded a little bit like an auto stock with mixture of a little bit of AI and energy. Zero with their FSD. Hence why we have a multiple of 70. Personally, I think that multiple should be around 150 because again, all full self-driving, but no one knows how to calculate that yet. Nobody knows how big it's gonna get or if it's going to work. Someone like me who's going all in to test the stock knows that it's going to work. I have a very strong conviction of that. And that's why I say the stock is cheap and I'm buying as much as I could, especially nowadays, especially if it goes down to 200 bucks per share. But here's the interesting part. The chicken came out and he also said that he believes Tesla stock could hit 500 bucks per share. So the question is, it's not if Tesla stock will hit 500, it's by when. What is the metrics? What is the requirement needed for Tesla to be 500 bucks per share? And in order to hit 500, we gotta reach 400. And in order to reach 400, we gotta reach 300. I know, don't bash me on that, I understand. And we're gonna take a look at that in this video, quarter by quarter from now until end of 2026 to see how Tesla can be worth 500 or even if they will be worth 500 so this is gonna be a very spicy video hope you guys will enjoy this video because i know you guys will so smash that like button why isn't the like button smash come on man and subscribe if you haven't already let's go here is the tesla master charts that i go on a quarterly basis without fsd excluding fsd all i have here is the vehicle deliveries however though the average selling price does include fsd as well because at least in North America, that's how they do it in Tesla's financials. We don't have that separately yet. Yet. And energy here. That's all I have here. Of course, you got the other small things like the services, the leasing, you know, the credits we got here as well. So we're only going based on these. And for Q4 of 2023, which is like literally this quarter that we are in, I did amend it a bit and I did get a bottoming of operating margin, which is extremely bullish for Tesla. And why is that? Well, because they're increasing prices again. And if they increase prices, they have vehicle gross profits going up and they're going to be doing a record delivery over 500 and if they do 500. But I do think I am very help hopeful that they will do over 500,000 vehicle deliveries in Q4, which would be absolutely flipping awesome. So for Q4, we get a triple whammy as a good news. We get the economy of scale because we are producing a lot of cars and this will help economy of scale, which will lower the cost for each vehicle faster and they are increasing prices. So this will increase the average selling price obviously, and the vehicle gross profits. So this is going to be a really cool, awesome flipping quarter. Overall, for non-GAAP profit, we get around over $11 billion. But for GAAP, and we go on the EPS here based on GAAP, not non-GAAP, we get just above $9.3 billion for the whole year. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to reach $100 billion in, pro in revenue for 2023 unfortunately but again i could be wrong because they could be adding other things into it as well that we don't even know yet maybe you know superchargers and stuff like that because even supercharger is not even included here either so anywho with that we get an eps non-gap of 79 cents the street is looking at 74 cents so we do get a beat and that would be awesome with the beat of the eps and a bottoming of margins i could see a pe go as high as 100 by q4 because at this point we have interest rate high is pretty much done if anything going forward it's going to be cuts then we've got tesla increasing prices which is absolutely an awesome news tesla bottoming in margins so from now on margins are going to stay the same or go higher slowly most likely it's going to go higher slowly and you guys are going to see in just a second how i mean by that we also got fsd beta opening in china so that's going to increase the average selling price and the margins as well together so i can see a pe of 100 by end of q4 which is by end of this year or between january 21st of 2024 to april 20th of 2024 there'll be a stock price of 268 bucks per share which again my stock price for 2023 was around 260 so it'd be interesting to see it hit around that much a lot of people are saying because of the cyber and so many other good news coming for Tesla that we can see the stock hitting 300 and with that we need to have a PE of around 115 I wouldn't be surprised I mean this could actually happen but I like to stay conservative and I'll give it a 
P of a hundred. If we want to stay at the stock price, what it is now around 230, that's a PE of around 86. So around 230. But again, I do think this is a, is a wave of good news coming and it's going to really help Tesla's business, the margins and profits and all that go higher. So that's why I see 100 PE makes sense. Now, let's go and see when will Tesla reach 300 and then 400 and then 500. So it's going to be really interesting. Smash that like button if you guys haven't already, because I don't know why you guys, I don't know why you guys haven't smashed that like button. Come on, man. Seriously. All right. Let's start off with 2024. Everything is filled out, by the way, because if I had to fill things one by one with you, this video would be at least 30 minutes long and we're not going to, no way, we're not going to do that. But in Q4 of Q1 and the delivery days in every quarter in Q4, I put 510,000 in Q1. Not too much of a difference in Q4 because they're always level headed. Q1 is not really a good quarter for vehicles and automobiles. But nonetheless, I do think it's going to be around the same or a bit more, which I put here 510,000, Q2 of 550,000, Q3 of 585,000, and Q4 reaching over 600,000 in deliveries. Overall, hitting a delivery record number of 2.3 million vehicles in overall in Q4, which is absolutely a sheesh flipping moment. The average selling price does increase slowly because of the Cybertruck and FSD beta coming into China. This will help the average selling price increase slowly. And right now, Tesla is increasing the prices slowly. So if they don't reduce prices, they'll probably at least stay, leave it how it is now, because I would assume that in Q1 or Q2 of 2024, we may start to see some interest rate cuts and if we see that, we can automatically see some demand coming back or just natural demand. People who want to buy a car will come back and overall we'll see more demand and Tesla will probably need to increase prices because most people lease the car or they finance it and that's heavily backed by interest rates. If it gets too cheap, Tesla may have to increase it. Or if the demand gets so overwhelming to supplies, then Tesla has to increase prices. That's normal economics. Nonetheless, for that entire year, 44.6 thousand per each vehicle as the average selling price. So that's a sheesh moment right there. Credits will slowly decline, in my opinion. I mean, we should always assume that they're declining every single year or in every single quarter. It may not happen because there's a lot of ICE cars that are still getting credits from Tesla, but keeping it conservative and keeping it realistic, really. Keeping it going lower, lower makes sense. Then we've got the services, services profits, leasing, leasing profits. I do expect leasing to slowly explode in Q3 once we see interest rates cut. The vehicle gross profits continues to increase slowly because they get to benefit from economy of scale and increasing prices as well as FSD beta going in China. Uh, guys, it's a big deal. FSD beta going to China, it's a very big deal. This is going to increase the average selling price for Tesla. This is absolutely a sheesh moment. We got the total gap gross profits here increasing quarter by quarter. We got energy. I put here 8.6 billion. I think this will be closer to around 9 billion. But nonetheless, look at the profits, almost 60 to 70% increase from 2023. Now, I do think it's going to be more, especially in Q2, when Mega Pack Factory in China gets ready to export Mega Packs. So it's going to be a sheesh moment indeed. Operating cost is pretty high because of the Cybertruck and ramping and trying to get the production up and running and all that stuff. Taxes, I lifted standard of 250 million every single quarter. Other income like interests starting Q3 because interest rates do go lower. And so putting your money in bonds or even a high savings account, they do give less. So I am reducing it quarter by quarter starting Q3. But the important part is the operating margin, 7.7% to 8.2% to 8.69%. Absolutely a sheesh moment. Total revenue for 2024 is gonna be around a bit over $125 billion. Net income non-gap over $13 billion. So really about $2 billion more from 2023, but we are still recovering and getting the stage ready and set up for 2025 because I do think 2025 is going to be a really good year for Tesla. 2024 is going to be a great year for Tesla as well. But 2025 year is going to be a bigger year for Tesla and we'll see in just a bit. But for the total net income gap, however, we have 11.3 billion. So again, that's about 2 billion more from Q3. But nonetheless, this is a good way. The company is growing from almost 100 billion in revenue to 25% growth in 2024. And that is more of a recovery year, in my opinion. If there's any recession we're going to get that's definite, it's probably going to be the first half of 2024 where the Fed probably has to start cutting rates more aggressively. Total opposite of what happened in 2023. Or I could just be completely wrong and nothing happens in 2024. 
who knows? At this point, nobody knows what's going to happen. We can just go based on day to day to see what's going on, what happened. Just three weeks ago, people thought interest rates are going to stay high for a lot longer. Now they're saying it's going to be cut in 2024. So really, it's a day to day thing. It's a lot of emotions into it. The data changes all the time. So we got to go take it step by step. That's what I think, though. I do think 2024, we may see some sort of slowdown recession in the first half of 2024. And then we'll see some price cuts happening. Canada is already thinking about doing the first price cut in April. So that should tell you something. Shares outstanding, I do dilute it every single quarter. I'm not going to assume there's not going to be any buybacks whatsoever. We have EPS non-gap of $3.72. So that's up from $3.20 until end of 2023. EPS gap, which I do go based on to get the stock prices by end of 2024 is $3.20. So really the non-gap of 2023 will be the gap of 2024. Very interesting. Now, stock prices for 2024. Now, in Q1 of 2024, I do think that 100p is going to stay because, again, if they report 7.7%, that means 100% now margins have bottomed. And now Cybertruck is coming. FSD Beta China is happening. So many just, I mean, just 2024 is the year where BP and EG signed a contract with Tesla to get their superchargers, which will be 100 million. Now, of course, what is it right now? In 2024, we have 125.1 billion dollars in revenue. This probably could be around 125 point, maybe three. So, and it's at cost. So, really, it's not that really interesting when it comes to moving the needle here. However, though, this would really help future cash flows because this would be on a royalty basis, I assume. Nonetheless, that's a fiscal EPS of two dollars and sixty-three cents gap of Q1 2024, keeping that 100 PE around the 260s, I do think that's going to happen. In Q2, however, 8.2 operating margin. That's in flipping sane. If we keep it 100 PE, that's still around the 260s, and I don't doubt that, but it's hard to see it not go higher than 100 PE. It really is hard to see it. I do think there's gonna be a lot of good information. I do think we're gonna be in a bull market and companies like Tesla is gonna benefit a lot in a bull market. I mean, in a bear market, we saw Tesla trading as low as a 50, 40 PE, which is absolutely ridiculous. 100 PE for Q2 2024, I do think that is the average. It call me crazy, man, but I do think that's the average. We could probably go as high as 120, around 315 or 110, but I'm going to keep it at 100p of 262. In Q3, however, that's where we see an uptick in EPS on a fiscal basis. We're going back to $3 now, which is absolutely crazy. And I do think the PE will follow that as well to 115. That's a stock price of $337 per share. That's a market cap just hitting above $1.1 trillion. Now, again, could this happen? I do think this could happen. And this is why I am begging right now for the stock to be below 200. It just doesn't make any sense. If there's a time for the stock to be below 200, it will be now before all these good news come and hits it. And when these good news comes and hits it, we're, gonna, we're going to be in a bull market. Good news and positive news is going to take more effect into Tesla than any bad news that's going to come out, even that's regarding Elon or not. So that's what I'm saying. Please, let us stay 200 for the next another three, four weeks. In Q4, 9% operating margin and EPS is at $3.20. So it's going up again. Trajectory is looking good. Interest rate is being cut. We have average selling prices going up. We see cyber trucks coming out. It's going to be a wonderful year next year around this time. Mark my words. It's going to be a wonderful year. And I'm going to say a P of 110. That's a stock price of 350 bucks per share, which is my price target. And yes, I did it specifically this way too. So I uh, call me biased, whatever it is, but I do think my price target by 2024 of 350 is realistic. Some of you guys will call me a bear. No, man, it should be around like 400. Well, that's about a PE of maybe 125, which, yeah, I mean, if you include FSD future cash flows, 100%, I mean, that should, in that case, should be around 150, around 500, maybe even more than that. But 350, PE of 110, I think the price target of 350 does make sense, and I do think there's merit to it. So that's 2024. Let's go to 2025. And uh, smash that like button, man. In 2025, the total deliveries is over 3 million, which is absolutely insane. And this is not including the compact car. Not yet. I do think 2025, worst comes, I mean, earliest is end of 2025, but I'm just going to push that to 2026. And you guys will see that in a bit as well. You guys can see how I broke it down, the 3.1 million every single quarter. Interesting part is, is that I kept the average selling price to 45,000. I didn't bring it down, which most likely if Tesla keeps 
well not if when they continue to bring cogs lower this will go lower as well but because there's type of truck coming most likely it's going to be averaging around 50 60 maybe maybe even around 70 thousand per cyber trucks being sold and by 2025 i do think they could sell about 250 thousand of them it's going to be a wild year for the cyber truck in 2025 with the added on of fsd version 12 which anyone can get in the united states and the fsd in china that's dramatically going to bring the average selling price higher for tesla as well because they put the average selling price with the fsd sales in the average selling price i do think 45,000 is kind of realistic Credits keep going lower, services keep going higher, leasing keeps going higher, profits and revenue both. Average margin, vehicle gross margin, goes to almost 19%. So literally a percent and four higher than 2024's. Sheesh. Total gap gross profits from 18.6 to 19.4%. Energy going from 8.5 to 12 point, almost 13 billion, and from 2 billion to 3 billion in 2025, which is just absolutely insane. Operating cost continues to go higher because we have factories and we're building Giga Mexico and mega packs and cyber trucks and all that kind of stuff. So naturally operating costs will continue to keep going higher. Taxes again 250. Other income, which is interest income, keeps going lower and lower and lower because i do think interest rates are going to continue to go lower in 2025 in fact i think 2025 is going to be the year we're going to we're going to see half of what we see today in interest rates so if it's 5.2 we can probably see 2.75 somewhere around there so good times are coming in my opinion operating margin we are reaching double digits again late 2025 so that's really good that's an average of 10.1 percent compared to 8.4 percent previously look at that net income non-gap almost 20 billion which is this absolutely in flipping insane. That's what a 50% growth since 2024. Sheesh. And then we got the total revenue in 2025 around 172 billion dollars and a net income gap of almost 18 billion, which is literally almost 50% growth from 2024. And that's insane. I mean, the vehicles only grew around what 33%, 32% around there in 2025 compared to 2024. So that's insane. That's absolutely insane. That's an EPS non-gap of $5.39 and an EPS gap of $4.86. So literally around a 50% growth. Absolutely insane. PE stock price for Q1 of 2025 around 105 or 100, around 363 bucks per share market cap of 1.2 trillion now again this may not happen something bad could happen in 2025 maybe another black swan event maybe another pandemic that can bring the negative sentiment back and tesla stock could be around the 70 pe's maybe going back to the 60 pe's reaching the 200 at that time which is interesting because 60 pe at that time is 200 which around this time will be 150. so that tells you fundamentally tesla is doing great but anything could happen, guys. But personally, if Tesla is doing these numbers and continue to go forward, then 105 PE is a fair value. I mean, it's a value that no one thinks that it's too expensive or it's too cheap. That's, that, that's how these prices are based on and the average of that quarter. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. In Q2 of 2025, 100 PE, stock price of 384 bucks. Market cap over 1.3 trillion. Q3 of 2025, 95 PE stock price of over 400. So we hit 300 in Q3 of 2024, and we hit the next 100 milestone just a year later or four quarters later of Q3 of 2025 with a 95 PE of 406 and a market cap almost reaching 1.4 trillion. When is 500 coming? That's going to be the interesting part. Q4 of 2025, 90 PE, we get a stock price of 438 bucks per share and a market cap over $1.5 trillion. Moving on to 2026. Smash that like button. What? Why? Why is that like button smash man? Come on. By the way, guys, this is available on Patreon. Only the four quarters is and the yearly. This is not. I do have a little bit more work to do on this before I can make it available on Patreon. But uh, click the link here, man. Check it out. Support me on Patreon, man. All right, 2026. This is the year where I think Tesla's gonna go ballistic. And the reason why I wanna keep buying at 200s or below, it's such a great deal then. Anyways, 2026, total deliveries, over 4.1 million vehicles. And that's a 30% growth, like a 32% growth compared to 2025. So we're not, we're, we got rid of the 50%. Maybe 2027, it won't be the 50% because we've got the compact car being ramped up aggressively. And we know that's going to take majority of deliveries. Average selling price did get dropped down from 45000 on the average to 43.8. Why? 
I'm assuming that the compact car is going to slowly make an impact and drag the average selling price down if it's being priced at 20 to 25,000. Credits, I kept the same 1.6. I do think legacy automakers are still going to be thinking, oh, the future's not the EVs and nobody wants an EV anymore. They just want gas cars. I think they're going to be late to the party and Tesla's going to continue selling these credits to them. Services is growing big time because we've got more vehicles on the road and they need more services. Leasing is increasing massively. I put here almost a threefold because interest rate is being cut. So that's that's and that's going to be insane. For the vehicle gross profits, I just capped it at 20%. I think going over 20% and that full self driving is still not in the equation yet. I think it's irresponsible. Comment down below. I think this may be wrong, but I just kept it at 20% just to stay conservative. That'll give us a total gap gross profits of almost 21%. Energy almost at 20 billion. Like that's just rocketing big time. Profits almost 4.6 billion. Growing 50%. Absolutely madness. Personally, I do think energy is going to grow much faster than this. But you guys know me. I like to stay conservative. Operating cost is growing as it normally should. Taxes, I again kept it at 1 billion. It's kind of tricky when it comes to these companies because they know really well how to avoid tax. Interest income does keep getting lower and lower because interest rates i mean it's 2026 guys if nothing has happened bad in the world and we have inflation under control there's no re need reason for this for interest rates to be around three four percent i'm assuming around two percent around there and majority of tesla's cash cash position would be building new factories going into work they will not leave it in bonds or high yield savings accounts i mean just look at the quarter revenues quarter over quarter in 2026 50 billion 56 billion 60 billion 66 billion that's crazy. Operating margin almost at 12%, average up from 10.1% to 11.4%, absolutely insane. Net income non-gap almost reaching $28 billion and gap around $26 billion. And look at the total revenue of 2026. 233 billion dollars the eps non-gap seven dollars and 58 cents compared to five dollars and 39 cents and the total gap eps 486 in 2025 seven dollars and four cents up like literally 50 percent now the pe in q1 of 2026 i put a pe of 85 now again i do think 2026 is the year where compact car gets released FSD is getting more and more well known. More and more countries are accepting it. There's more data to it, but that's we haven't included this here yet. But assuming that's what's happening as well, and maybe maybe road taxis are out, and maybe licensing is already happening with FSD, so we don't know that yet. But with all that keeping in mind, an 85 PE I put here has a stock price of 462 and a market cap of over 1.6 trillion. In Q2 2026, PE of 80, that's a stock price of 478 and a market cap of almost 1.7 trillion. Q3 of 2026, 75 PE has a stock price of 487, so not too much of a difference there, and a market cap of 1.75 trillion. In Q4 or year end of 2026, 70 PE and a stock price of 493 bucks, and our market cap just reaching almost 1.8 trillion. Now, most likely, if Tesla's doing all this and we got FSD, a 70 PE won't make sense by end of 2026. I would think around 80 PE, and I think that's the max, and that's a, and that's a market cap of 2 trillion and a stock price of 563. But keep it conservative, and obviously, we, it's really hard to think that far and project that far. And I worked on these numbers. It took me a few hours to work on these numbers to see what's realistic, what is not. So I'm going to cap it at this. Until Tesla doesn't have the FSD software included in the income, this is what I think what could happen because we don't have a clear picture how FSD is going to do because we know FSD, the future cash flow of that, the future profits of that is what's going to take Tesla stock to new flipping heights. So that's, that, there you guys have it. Q4 or end of year end of 2026, that's when realistically and fundamentally Tesla stock would be worth 500 if you guys want a fair price. If you guys want 500 bucks to be a fair price, that's 2026. If you want it to be looking forward another five years then a p of 100 around 700 bucks per share maybe 120 around 845 by 2026 makes sense but that's looking five years ahead from 2026 if you want to look at it now what the company is doing right now and as well as having some stuff what's happening in the next couple of years or so 70 pe because that's still a high multiple 70 p is still a high multiple that's a stock price of 493. now a lot of people are saying that when will tesla have a nvidia moment a NVIDIA moment for Tesla would be, I would say, sometimes in Q3 of 2024. So literally around like three, four quarters from now. Three quarters from now. Now remember, NVIDIA, when they had that moment, it went the PE went high as 200. So if you guys want to change the 115 to 200, 
That's a stock price of 586. Imagine Q3 of 2024 stock price being 586. That's already putting the price of like 2026. So do I think Tesla will have an Nvidia moment? I do, but only if FSD comes alive and when it's added to the income segment as a separate thing, which I'm waiting for. Once I see that and the board goes like, yeah, next year around this time, we do expect to have this many FSD drivers to take it. This is that, this is that. We do expect to grow around 50, 60% based on EPS. Then we can see Tesla stock jump the way how Nvidia did. But here in this situation, I have not added that. I just kept it of what a fair price for Tesla would be based on these numbers. That is all. And I do get around 500 bucks per share by 2026. Q4. Fair price, fair price, right? I'm not talking about what it should be. Based on these numbers, these fundamentals, if we do this much, if they have all this in mind, then that would say CNP makes sense, in my humble opinion. That's all. This is only a prediction, a prediction alone, and not facts. So always do your DD and take everything with a grain of salt. Now, do I think we're going to reach 500 earlier than that? In my opinion, I think 2025 could be the year, again, all based on FSD and how that's going to bring the EPS higher. If Wall Street knows that EPS is going to double next year, and they know that profits are gonna be huge, they will give the stock a high multiple. Nvidia was a great example. Palantir is a great example. But until we don't have that day yet, until we don't see Tesla increasing prices indefinitely, and we see average selling prices going up, we will not have that day. That's my two cents, guys. Now here's the thing, guys. I do think Tesla could be worth 10 trillion by end of 2033, I think that was the year. I broke it down here, and obviously I haven't, it's very, very basic. Tesla has more than four sectors. But you guys can check it out here, 10 trillion by 2033. Most likely it's gonna be around 2030 if we add other things. Check it out, obviously, it's just a prediction alone. And for your entertainment, and obviously I use real numbers. I didn't pull them out of my ass. So check it out, you'll be disappointed, guys. Get your I bought a dip t-shirt, but because we know by 2030, we bought the dip. We bought the dip. Subscribe for more, and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.